actually, I want to actually watch this with you guys. I haven't actually checked this out, but it's a new documentary. A uh, little clip again from that YouTube account called Ghost Gum. I think I watched another video of his already about Brendan Shaw, but he did another one because I'm assuming, you know, he was happy about how the other one performed. So he's just kind of hitting it out of the agrim. That's the really sad, you know, fact of life that's happened with Flipping Brendan where he's now turned into a fucking content generating machine. Obviously, I'm a good example of it, but there are now these YouTubers who make these little mini documentary kind of like um, rise and fall type, com you know, things, videos, whatever. They now jumped in and now they're now d deciding to make videos on Brennan because they see quickly when they make one, the views are fucking crazy. And they're like, you know what? Let's double back again. So it's, it's, it's bad enough. He's got people like myself who were former fans criticizing and picking apart all the dumb things he says and does. But now you've got a whole band of like youtubers who just like making like content that people like to watch and they're just gonna keep pumping that shit out as much as the, as much as long as they keep getting views they're just gonna keep finding a way of pumping that little clips and stuff of him which is gonna be worse because more people are gonna see this shit than the stuff that i do in it so that's fucking hilarious anyway let's watch the video this is courtesy of ghost gum the youtube account the title is the never ending downfall of brendan shop this should be a good one i haven't actually watched this so let's check this out Schaub is in a never-ending downward spiral. It seems he can't go any lower until he does. His post-UFC career has been a never-ending downfall that I thought culminated in the worst comedy special of all time. A special that was so bad that the mention of it leads to laughter and not in a good way. That or... You mean the Arlington where Gringo Poppy was filmed? <laughs> Wait, is that where is that where that was filmed? <laughs> is it? And then... <laughs> <laughs> How do you Honestly, Steve-O pulling that out of his fucking ass was legitimately one of the fucking best bits I've ever seen in my life. I legitimately laughed when I saw that clip, honestly. Amazing that you remembered the fucking venue. I don't even think there were guys on the subreddit that actually knew that it was filmed at the Burlington Improv. <laughs> Oh, I got lost, Steve. How do you know that? How do you know that was filmed there? Um, I was fascinated by the entire <laughs> <laughs> Just when you think things can't go worse for him, they inevitably do. And it always seems to be his own fault. You thought bullying Bobby Lee was bad. How about him being the butt of every joke in the MMA and comedy space? Or how about working with deviants at best, criminals at worst? Or when he hired a mentally unstable employee, fired said employee, only for that man to expose literally everything. He called him, he called BGL mentally unstable. <laughs> uh, that's amazing. That's actually a good description of BGL, isn't it? I think he'd, he'd actually be okay with that, to be fair. I think he'd be okay with that. I think so. I think he's self-aware enough to be okay with being described as mentally unstable. I think he just kind of, you know, he keeps it in check somewhat, but, and also, you know, he's a Hollywood actor. He's a Hollywood influencer kind of guy type, you know, you kind of have to be mentally unstable to do that kind of profession. You know, name me a fucking person in the entertainment industry over there in LA, whether they're fucking A-list or Z-list that isn't mentally unstable. As Brendan said, go. I mean, Thing about Brendan's life, including his bathroom habits, substance addictions, and infidelity. Despite all of this chaos, in recent times it seems Brendan is in the worst place a comedian can be in, fading into irrelevance. But let's rewind a bit. It's rewind. Brendan is, first and foremost, in his own words, a comedian. But his ticket sales have been looking a bit dicey lately. I mean, look at his UK tour. The gray means sold, by the way. Brendan is constantly having to cancel shows for whatever reason he makes up that's not being a draw. Basically, he can't sell tickets and has to lie about it. Schaub once said he had to cancel a show in San Francisco because the district attorney got recalled right before his show was about to begin. <laughs> the district, the DA got recalled and he's like, you thought crime was bad before? He goes, oh, people aren't going out. Like our rest. Jesus Christ, do you remember that? Do you remember that? How pathetic that was of a lie. I just, I honestly, you know what? Some, in some regards, I don't blame the guy because I think Brendan isn't that, he's not that smart, right? So I don't think he does this stuff off his, it's not in, he's on his own. It's not, he doesn't do this out of the blue because he just thought of it. I think there are other comedians that do the same thing, if not worse, that he just kind of copies. 
this kind of excuses and lying and shit. I just don't understand it personally. I don't get this fascination with these comics lying and kind of embellishing their ticket sales because the people in the business know what's the deal. The fans don't give a fuck. So who are you lying to? That's the issue I've never understood really when it comes to the whole lying about ticket sales and being obsessed with selling out. The fans don't care if you sell out because if I want to see you, I want to see you. And the people in the industry know if you did sell out or if you didn't. So if you do one of those fake sellouts where you sold a bunch and then the rest of them got sold for free and then you sold, you sold out, but you actually didn't because they're all walk-ins, no one's going to care. It's just weird. Fronts are dead. These San Fran streets are too dangerous. Ignore the fact that the Warriors had their championship parade right after he said this. It couldn't be the fact that most people think he's the worst comedian on the planet right now. But unfortunately, it is his own fault. And I know comedy is subjective, but Brendan stinks at comedy. Unless he's stealing jokes. You know what my favorite food is? Fajitas. I love fajitas. Oh no, oh no. And it is loud. Oh no. Smoke, it's like 4th of July. Everyone's like, oh my God. What is that? What the fuck is that? I go to Chili's and order fajitas. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, I order fajitas. I'm not being funny or anything, right? But the joke's decent enough, but it's not a, maybe I'm, maybe I'm redacted. It's not a joke that you'd run to steal. You'd hope, it, it, it'd be the kind of joke that you'd, if you are a joke thief, which you shouldn't be, but if you are a joke thief, it should be the kind of joke that you should be like inspired by, to, like quote unquote, to use as a sort of like template to sort of like use for something else. So maybe you, instead of talking about fajitas, you talk about being in a club and popping bottles and shit. And maybe you just twist it like, oh, I was in a club. I don't know, I was fucking, you know I me, mean? I don't really like drinking anyway. I don't really know shit about drinks. And I just pick a drink off the menu. Next thing I know, I've got a fucking, you know, a, a little, um, what do you call it? Mariachi band of fucking hotties in swim shorts, you know, with fucking bottles of Grey Goose with sparklers in it with my name on the top of it. I just wanted a drink. You could kind of spin it that way. But you don't need to copy it word for word. That's the thing that makes Brendan look terrible because the joke is decent. Don't get me wrong. Nick Swartzman's a funny dude. It's a decent enough joke, but it's not the joke that you should be trying to steal. You should be at least trying to work with that one and kind of build your way up from it or use it as a kind of template or something or a bit of inspiration. But what do I know? I'm redacted. Because it's like popping. <laughs> those fajitas hit the floor, it's all... <laughs> He sucks so much that even his Make-A-Wish sponsor Joe Rogan won't let him play at his comedy club. Look how uncomfortable Brendan gets when somebody brings up Rogan's club, Comedy Mothership. Have you been to Rogan's new place in uh... <laughs> He just, he just called me in and Austin. asked me to come and do a weekend there. People love That's it. Good. Despite this, Brendan is somehow more That's gonna be so funny when Brian does eventually go there in August. Oh, I can't wait for that salt of a joke in the MMA world. Brendan makes his predictions based on the fact he was a UFC fighter. On his show... <laughs> Crash 1984. That was actually fantastic, AZ. You would make a good Carlos Mencia. <laughs> Thank you, Crash. <laughs> the best compliment ever. You'd make a good Carlos Mencia. You would actually <laughs> make for one of the best fucking notorious fucking joke thieves of all time the one that got fucking excommunicated from the comedy scene by the legend that is rogan oh that's fucking that's a great compliment i love it brendan will make predictions about ufc fights and if you disagree with him he'll make you feel stupid Thank i you. just don't know how to bet against the dagestani who gets you on the ground and just rains elbows and you're not able to stand up. Because I would probably say in many ways, he's Khabib 2.0. Not true, I'll keep, keep And going. his striking is SSB. actually very, very good. Uh, really? Cool. Let me ask you this. You know, the annoying thing about this stuff is, right, is that with Brendan, it's like, this should be quite embarrassing for you because obviously he's the, you know, he's the former UFC fighter. But what this, what this kind of, really illustrates is that he doesn't watch tape, right? He doesn't watch previous fight cards. He's not analyzing fighters and slides. He just literally rocks up to his show, whether it's a short show or the fight companions and just kind of wings it 
or whatever clips he's kind of stumbled across on social media. But the one thing, again, this is the funny thing about it, is that that was the one avenue that he was getting paid for to do that kind of job by Showtime when he originally had his Below the Belt show. So you'd think he'd kind of approach it with a bit more professionalism, be a little bit more analytical, have some research, blah, 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 blah. Or just because he's a former fighter, just having a, an interest in trying to break down fights and maybe have a hot take that's different from everybody else because there's so many people out there doing fight pick fight predictions um, fight picks and predictions and shit and there's many former fighters out there that also have their own content and shit you want to maybe have a different voice something you know approach from a different perspective so maybe looking at fights and checking people out again and maybe making some phone calls and then having an, a, a really unique insight would make you stand out and that actually be something that would be a part of your a pride, something to stand behind, like something to be prideful about. Like, oh, here's what, here's my stance. Even if the hot take is fucking insane, but the man doesn't do that, but approaches it incredibly lazily. But then, if you, like Brian Callen, who doesn't watch UFC often, but is able to kind of maybe do a couple of Googles and YouTubes and check people out and stuff, or remember if someone fought, approach it a little bit more analytically, he gets annoyed. It kind of makes him feel a bit insecure, and he reacts weird, and he starts like dismissing. So this is stuff he does to Brian all the time. It's really bizarre. Who's the best guy he's beat? And I, I, I've done this to people that know the game too. Yeah. When I asked you earlier, why Mak Makachev, right? Yeah. And then I say, tell me the best guy he's beat. You can't. There's been no, he's not proof. That's the thing. Um, um, Ray, Ray Chan joint. I actually disagree. Ray Chan joint. I actually disagree. He said, man, when you bet against McGregor or over Mayweather, you should be fired on the spot. I actually think that period in time, as insane as that prediction was, that was actually Brendan at his best because he actually was approaching that hot take as insane as it was at the time and obviously wrong. He did approach it from some sort of basis of watching tape, of analysing how, you know, Connor fights, the famously, right? That karate starts, he's going to be low, his angles. That's how he was actually talking about the fight. He was legitimately, like, he at the time, legitimately believed Connor could win because he analyzed how Connor fought, knows how Mayweather has fought over the years, and surmised that maybe McGregor would offer a different problem that Mayweather's never seen before in the ring, which is obviously incorrect. But at least it came from a somewhat there was some sort of like logic included in it. It wasn't just him like you know guessing and just whatever deciding that this person won, that person won because he just felt like at the time. He actually came with it with some analysis. That was actually good. I felt like anyway. Proven yet. Well, in he only facet. lost once in that entire, that's a lot, that's a good run right there. But I, I go back to who has he beat? When we're talking about tip of the spear. Yeah. So somebody put together a list of all of Shab's predictions. In 23 fights, if you put $100 against every single person Brendan picked, <laughs> you would be up $2,000. <laughs> One of the top MMA shows right now, Morning Combat, makes constant references to the Fighter and the Kids subreddit, a forum that's dedicated to making fun of and exposing Brendan. Is he walking me to my truck? What are you like, where's he going? Like, Why would he be walking you to your truck, do you think? I don't know. Is he, I'm not going like, to blow him. I mean, Luke, if the local DA <laughs> gets removed at all leading up to this, would you consider not going? I don't even know what that was. Get some bits for safety purposes, Luke. That's all that means. But I had uh, Ruffles White Charles, and it was just you know, it was Carnesada, and it was great. It was crazy. not only that, but Brendan's one and only saving grace in this world, his co-host Theo Vaughn, left him. Uh, I'm gonna be taking a, a step back from being on uh, King and the Sting, and he hasn't been seen since. He hasn't been seen since, not on one piece of content. I can't think of one thing. I actually remember Brendan mentioning that Theo went to his kid's birthday party or something like that. But I can't think of anything else that Theo has done with Brendan since this day. He ran away. He literally ran for, for the hills. <laughs> he doesn't even call in. Nothing. Zero. He hasn't been seen since. No fire in a kid, no golden hour, nothing. And just the other day, he made a little snide little joke at, you know, fucking Chris Lear on Joe Rogan. Absolutely hilarious. I just want to thank you guys for um, just being a part of my life and, and letting this show be a part of your life. And, um, you know, I'm grateful to you, Brendan, man. Appreciate it. You got to handle some shit, brother. You know, you got, there's a bigger thing for you out there you know 
<laughs> he's crying. Thinking back at it though, at the time we we thought he was crying or being emotional. I felt at the time because there was some issues going on with Theo. Maybe Theo did that thing where he lied and told Brendan that he had some mental health issues, but it wasn't that. He just wanted to leave and he wanted to make an excuse. So he just, you know, used, I don't know, my mum is sick, I've got mental health issues or something. But now thinking back at it, maybe Theo told him, hey man, like my agent basically said, you're bad for business and you're associated with Chris and shit. He's got all this pedo shit around him. I just can't do this. Maybe Theo actually told him point blank, hey man, like they said, if I want to reach the next level and shit, that I need to just like not be around you. <laughs> and that's basically why Brendan sounded and looked so sad. Obviously because of his friend also, but you know, like he legitimately looked like distraught and you know, maybe seeing all the money signs walking away as well. But fucking you no, know, this was a really, really depressing show. This is also the show that the the producer asked um Theo if he wanted to do the hot chip challenge before he left or something. He was like, I don't want that. That famous line, I don't want that. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know what it is exactly, man. My favorite part about this is Brendan framing it as Theo has to get his life together. He has to sort some stuff out. But since leaving Brendan, Theo has been absolutely killing it. Exactly. But a huge win tonight. He celebrates with the rat <laughs> Theo Vaughn. For old times, I should have done this in the middle of the show, but for old times, we maybe want to eat, I'll eat a hot chip. <laughs> I don't want that. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I fucking love you. For old time's sake. What? <laughs> so now he's stuck with two alleged sex offenders and Montez from Workaholics to run his mediocre podcasts with. His main co-host, Brian Callen, also collaborates with husband of the year, Steven Crowder, to create <laughs> gems like this. You have to be embarrassed, man. 60 years old. Nearly 60 years old. He's probably got 30 years experience in the whole, in the entertainment industry, I say, at large, Brian Callen. Pass at the comedy store. Joe Rogan's best friend. All these amazing comedic roles, right? Like, what is that? Um, 40 Year Old Virgin. Or what is it called? What's that one? No. That fucking one where they get lost in fucking Las Vegas. That famous movie that he was in. All these amazing things he's done in his career. Successful podcast. Blah, 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 blah. Great CV. And then in the twilight of your career, towards the end, you end up dressed up as a cow, shitty green screen with what? This guy's whipping. Like, what What are you doing? How the mighty have fallen? Is it, sorry, hangover. How the mighty have fallen? Like, what the fuck is this? His comedic gold, what can I say? But despite working with such titans, Brendan's finances must have been dicey, as he's had to fire multiple employees. <laughs> but the one we're going to focus on today is Mark Harley, <laughs> or as the subreddit calls him, the big gay lion, or BGL, just BGL for short, who was known as Brendan's handler. He would do a lot of Brendan's social media, go on tour with him, and help out with the podcasts. This man was known for being completely unhinged, as documented by the subreddit. And theories circled around that if he quit or Brendan fired him, he would turn on Brendan. And that is why the Fire and the Kids subreddit remains undefeated. Those guys and girls' predictions are always on point. Now, I don't know if it's because these guys are fucking, you know, savants or they're fucking mystics and shit. I don't know. Or if it's just to do with the subjects at hand are incredibly predictable. But they always, always smash it out of the park. And I remember specifically loads of fucking threads. I think the ones where like BGO were like defending um, Brendan, especially on his show. Um, uh, I don't know what the fucking show was called. Um, they'd be mad or something. I forgot the name of it, whatever he used to call it. And then after a certain time, he'd come on the subreddit and start defending Brendan and shit. But whenever there was a clip of him overly defending Brendan, there would be somebody in the reply saying, hey, th there's going to come a time where this guy's going to turn on Brendan and he's going to unleash the fucking clip. He is going to go rain hellfire on the guy. And uh, clearly he did. And he provided some very, very good insights for all of us, myself included, and many, many hours of entertainment. So big up BGL, but don't big up BGL at the same time because the guy's a fucking mess. But Jesus Christ, what an incredible arc. 
Of course, that ended up happening, and things came to fruition when Mark was let go and proceeded to absolutely expose Brendan Schaub for everything. It started with a few stray shots on Instagram, <laughs> then a post on the Fighter and the Kids subreddit, which was met with some hesitation from the users, as they knew Mark was completely unhinged. But slowly, Mark started to reveal his true intentions. He started leaking messages between him and Brendan, while simultaneously exposing what a bad guy Brendan was. Brendan pisses and sinks. <laughs> this was all confirmed by this voice memo Brendan sent him after he'd leaked all this stuff. What's up, brother? Uh, um, <laughs> voice note, so, so not to text, text you. I don't for, know, you know, for obvious reasons. For a few reasons. Um, <laughs> I don't know, man. man. I've, I've been contemplating whether hitting you back up. Um, um, you seem really upset. Set. Obviously. Gaslighting King. Uh, um, hurt, man. That man. If you want well, to hurt me, brother, you got me, brother. Bro. You definitely got, got me. But Mark wasn't <laughs> satisfied. <laughs> that line, if you went to hurt me, brother, you got me, brother. That line will live. That line just has to go in the fucking T-Fat K Hall of Fame. If you went to hurt me, you hurt me. You got me, brother. <laughs> I'm hurt, man. If you wanted to hurt me, you got me, brother. You definitely got me. But Mark wasn't satisfied with just shit-talking Brendan. So he did an official AMA on the Fighter and the Kids subreddit where all of Brendan's dirty laundry was aired. You know what's funny about this AMA, I just thought? One of the reasons why it went nose... You know, it went fucking... It nose died for Brendan in terms of his perception and whatnot. Some people attribute it to the time when Brian Callan and Brendan did um, the fucking AMA on the Fire and the Kid. When the Fire and the Kid was actually popping and doing numbers, um, there was a time when they were trying to engage with their audience and shit and they did an AMA. But I guess at the time, that was also around the same time the, the, the sub was starting to realise, oh, this Brendan guy that we were a fan of isn't that cool. He's a bit of a douche. And I guess that was getting back to Brendan at some point. And his, his always default reaction to any bits of criticism or pushback is always to kind of be defensive. So he walked into that AMA already on 10, like ready to kind of swing. And at the slightest hints of jokes and teasing and stuff, he just went into full defense mode and just, you know, wasn't the greatest AMA ever. And it kind of turned into a bit of a disaster. And people attribute that to one of the reasons why he is where he is. So isn't it funny, the contrast that the BGL AMA provided myself and others many, many hours of fucking insight and entertainment and kind of propelled him in the and changed how he kind of viewed things. And it was also the opposite for him in, in terms of an AMA. I like that uh, contrast is interesting. One person's AMA makes them go down, another person's AMA makes them go up. The yin and yang of life. Keep in mind, this is to a community whose sole goal is to make fun of Brendan. It's really like finding a diamond in a coal mine. Now, something that's not going to ruin your life, in fact, it's going to make your life a lot better, is the sponsor of today's video, Manscaped. It's the long. Oh, I legitimately thought he was going to talk about the MMA host <laughs> interview with, <laughs> with the ex. <laughs> it was revealed there. On mower four. Oh, oh, there's good fast forward. Whack preserver and ever use parts. The number one thing he did was confirm what we all knew. Brendan contributes literally zero to the production apart from sitting down and attempting to talk to a camera. He also confirmed that Brendan is a pathological liar, but as I said, we all kind of knew this. And yeah. I, I, I've never seen that Blackfish documentary, so I, I didn't, you know, I was like, whatever. And there was one big killer whale. And I re again, I've never, I haven't seen the dog before I went to SeaWorld. <laughs> Remember Blackfish? Did you guys watch Blackfish on CNN? Sure did. <laughs> ruined, ruined SeaWorld. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know. <laughs> the lying is just like incredible. He lies about so many. The, the, the best one for me. The best lie Brendan did was that was unnecessary because I love his unnecessary ones. The ones that he does on purpose, I get it, but the unnecessary ones are the best. Oh, when he went on Busting with the Boys, he went on that podcast, Busting with the Boys, those two NFL guys, and for some reason in the conversation, he just lied about having like a board of directors that advised him on thick boy shit. And I was like, what? <laughs> He was trying to act like Thick Boy was fucking PepsiCo or some shit. It's like, bro, why why would you lie about that? 
Oh, border. and then I think one of the guys kept like was asking some more questions because he you know maybe he's a more business minded, actually gives a shit about that sort of shit, and maybe knows what a PNL is and whatnot. Like he was actually interested. Oh, what, what so what do they do? What kind of advice? Da, da, da. Do you do you have scheduled meetings? How often do you see them? I don't know. And Brendan was just like giving him that face, like stop asking questions. Like you know I mean, I, I already answered one. Just leave it. But it was such an unnecessary lie, and it kind of just dug himself a hole for no reason. Incredible, incredible shit. You watch black fist from the, from the depression, their fins are down. And I looked at my girl, I go, hold up. I've never seen this doc. Yeah. I was, I'm, a, I'm, you know, I'm ignorant to it. Yeah. But you've seen the dog and you still allowed to go to sea work? Yeah, I go, that's fucked up. What we didn't know is he apparently lies to everybody in his life, no matter what. He's vaping, I go, oh, you know those are worse for you than cigarettes. Uh -oh. <laughs> he goes, what the fuck did you just say? Go, you, you know the vape's actually worse for you than cigarettes. Unpop unpopular opinion. I actually think this story was real. Oh, sorry, I actually think this story was true. I actually think he did have an interaction with Dave Chappelle, but in his head, he wanted it to be like this, but it didn't happen like that. I think they did exchange there'd be a, the odd, you know, what's up, hi, whatever. But in his head, he wished he would have said this. So he kind of does that thing that you used to do if you were like a kid or something, trying to impress your friends, right? You say, oh, you saw this cute girl. You saw the cute girl. You were too scared to approach her. But when you tell your friends, you make it seem like, yeah, I saw this cute girl. She couldn't get off my nuts. She was all over me. I told her to chill out. I told her I had to go play football. I had to go hang out with the boys. I got no time for girls. You know what I mean? You got to keep them You, you got to keep them sweet, innit? You got to like, knock them down a peg. You know that sort of vibe. I think that's what he did. So I'm pretty sure he did have interaction with Dave Chappelle, but it just didn't go that way. They just probably nodded at each other or some shit, and that was it. Who told you that? Like Oh, it's just what they say. He's like, who says that? I'm like, oh, fuck, dude. He was vaping. He goes, my doctor said these, uh, he smoked cigarettes. He goes, my doctor right. said these are actually better for you. I go, they're not. He goes, how do you know? I go, fucking Google it, dude. They're not. He goes, really? I go, no, he fucking threw in the trash. Yeah. Really? Yeah. He also said, <laughs> Joe Rogan's really. <laughs> Brendan bought views for the Grillo Poppy. Also, the reason I'm censoring this word is because YouTube nuked my prior Brendan Shaw video, citing extreme profanity when I said this word, even though it's literally the title of Really? You can't say um, Yingo? Okay, I didn't know that. Brendan special on YouTube. So he bought views to get it to a million, which if you didn't know, completely fucks your channel in the algorithm. YouTube says, wait. I'm really surprised by that, to be fair, because I generally think the Gringo Poppy could have still got a million views without buying views personally we know we all know the the special is terrible we all know that but i think he could have easily got to a million views if he just would have left it without you know fucking with it especially if he didn't delete comments because there was a period where he started to delete comments and shit if he just would have left it open and free let people say and do what they want at least you could put it out you're happy with it it would have eventually got to a million views because of how terrible it was and because of how it became a meme it would have eventually got there one million percent um, no pun intended. So I don't know why he bought views, but again, we know why. Instant gratification wants to appear like he's the big dog without actually doing big dog shit. It's just a common conundrum, isn't it, with this dude, unfortunately. He kind of just always, always shoots himself in the foot. Wait, why are 30% of the people watching this in Bangladesh? Mark also said he bought followers on Twitter and Instagram, which is why his engagement rates are completely fucked. I mean, I can tweet this out and get more likes than Shaw on any <laughs> given tweet. These are the brains we're dealing with at Thick Boy Studios. Brendan is also apparently very sensitive to any criticism. Even people giving him constructive criticism, he writes off as haters. Yep. He's also very negative about the Joe Rogan crew in Texas, like how he hates Shane Gillis saying he doesn't want to suck on the teat of Joe like those guys. But to be fair to him, he already sucked it dry years ago. One of the dumbest things that Mark exposed about Brendan was that he pees in the sink. Apparently, there's a sink in the- I'm actually, I don't think that's true. I don't think he revealed that, to be fair. I think the sub already knew, because he said, Brendan has said plenty of times that he's pissed in the sink. It's, it's been like an open joke. Um, I don't think BGL revealed anything there. Maybe he revealed... Hold on, what am I thinking about? Maybe I'm thinking about the other studio. Maybe BGL revealed when they moved into this new studio that he appeared in that one, maybe. But I'm pretty sure the Fire and the Kids subreddit, we already knew that he was pissing in the sink. It's a known thing because he said it himself before in the pod. It's been like a thing. I remember there was a, there was a clip actually of Brian talking about... Um, 
Brian talking about um, washing his... No, I think Chin talking about actually when to use his hands and the sink was busy. I don't know. I think I remember that. Maybe I remember the law incorrectly, but I'm not going to attribute all of it to BGL. But BGL did help, as um, Jesse is saying here. BGL definitely confirmed it and added some fucking, you know, yellow piss-coloured flavour. Oof, not flavour. Colour to it. In the middle of Thick Boy Studios that Brendan pisses in every day, multiple times a day. Dude, oh, nothing makes you. me happier than peeing in a sink. I there pee in go. the sink. There see, this was all skip. See, you confirmed it ages ago. Listen, there's nothing more satisfying to me when I pee in the sink. Oh. I pee in sinks all the time. <laughs> me too. <laughs> I love it. Matter of fact, I feel like sinks, I, I feel like a hell's angel. Is that not? And the funny thing about it is that I think we can all understand and agree when people do it in an emergency. I think if you've lived in a, you know, I've grown up in a family home that only has one toilet and you have like, you know, many siblings and whatever. So there's only one toilet. So sometimes if you really need to piss, you either go piss in the garden or you piss in the sink. But it's like a one-off thing. You don't, it's not like a thing that you'd run to all the time. And also the pissing in the sink thing is only an option if your parents aren't in because they catch you you're going to get fucked up. So usually go and do it in the garden like a fucking, you know, like a kid from a country that I'm not going to describe. But still, you know what I mean. So everyone kind of understands that part of it. But imagine having a pod, a studio in like an office building somewhere where you'd imagine they're all kind of communal little podcast, you know, storagey type unit places. But usually those places always have pretty decent communal bathrooms that you could all basically use mostly on all, on each level so something like you have to kind of go if you're on floor four you have to go to floor three to go to piss not really most commercial units like that will have a loo a toilet on each floor you can go to but somehow he's so lazy that he can't even go to the toilet he'd rather just like stay in the same room in the same vicinity of pissing there and the other thing you have to imagine as well these spaces that they have from the last podcast studio tour thing that we saw is completely open plan for the most part, right? With the door, you know, that leads into it. But for the most part, it's all open plan. So you piss in that sink and everybody fucking hears it and everybody fucking smells it until you obviously come back the next day because the cleaners are probably going to clean everything. But that smell that must fucking permeate around that thick boy studios must be insane especially after long days of podcasting and whiskey drinking and shit imagine what it must smell like in there with him pissing in the sink with shit in the sink that's already in there like Not the most <laughs> disgusting thing you've ever heard he was also confronted by notorious germaphobe howie mandel about this when for some reason he was on his podcast uh, don't go to the bathroom there because you piss in the sink what? <laughs> they said that you you said this out loud. Wait, don't, he piss in the sink don't here? To, I've, I've done I've it maybe once. Oh. oh, yeah. Great fucking point, Josie Masters. Great fucking point. He doesn't drink water. Brennan's one of those guys that thinks because he drinks a lot of liquid or because he drinks, um, sorry, coffee or other liquids that aren't water, that kind of substitutes drinking water, which is fucking insane. It's like, a, it's like, the, it's like the thinkings of like a kid. It's like something like a child would say right like a teenager would say something like that but a grown adult not you know willingly drinking water during the day is insane but can you imagine how he's pissed my smell whiskey a comp you know a diet of whiskey coffee um energy drinks and you know food truck diaries like yo okay but i mean so was that a, was the whole thing emergency. nobody's talking about the fight everybody was saying howie how are you gonna go there he pisses in the sink. He Brendan talked about he pissed in the sink. I had to be in the sink one time. It was a state of emergency. But even worse than the sink pissing was Brendan being exposed for being an Adderall addict. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, by his own admission, he bought Adderall off the dark web. He said he does 90 to 120 milligrams a day. I just got off Adderall. I got a problem. <laughs> wow. Three 30 milligram Adderalls a day for You a take lot. 10? You take 10, you're fucked. That's a lot. You take 10, That's a lot. I took three throughout the day. Now, if I'd stand up, I'd take another. What did you get off of it? Just stop doing it. I was like, oh, you got a problem. I stopped. I went cold turkey. And then how long is it? That's the one thing as well that is always suspicious about people like him, right? Where like you brag about, no, sorry. You you like, you do this like f faux vulnerability thing by being open, talking about a quote, unquote addiction. But then you never battle with trying to like recover and stop f from doing the thing it's always like a hero story oh i just quit it instantly cold turkey 
yeah, because I'm a, I'm Superman. I'm a beast of a dad, beast of a drug addict. It's like, what? That's not how it works. If you're having to depend on something like that, that, you know, at that level of, at, at that frequency, that often, that, de- you know, that level of dependency, then clearly it's an issue. You're not just going to stop that cold turkey. That's not how it works. And also it's nothing to brag about. Like, well, what's the problem with actually seeking some help and going through the necessary steps to kind of rectify the issue? There's nothing wrong with that. I don't think so. But he loves the kind of hero story, right? The hero kind of conclusion. I had this issue. So again, full vulnerability. Look at me exposing that I'm not the beast and the perfect guy that I assume. But then quickly kind of closes the door. There's no vulnerability. No, no way. Nope. Let's close the door. No vulnerability. No, uh, you know, whatever else. I, I, I completed it. I sorted it. I call it a quick cold turkey. Wild. It's been, it's day. been uh, <laughs> three hours. No, um, it's probably been over two months now. Did you go to a doctor uh, and they were, like for psychiatric nah, help? It, no, uh, he doesn't dark go to the web. doctor. Dark web. Don't do that. Don't say it. Now, if this is true, <laughs> which I will admit, there's a good chance it isn't. That is insane. No, for sure, he was buying it off somebody else who was buying off the dark web. Brendan isn't buying, but he doesn't know how to access Tor and shit. He's not got no idea what to do, how to fucking buy Bitcoin. He's not doing that. Or XR, X, XMR and shit. Like, come on, let's be real. You probably just purchased it off a reseller who was buying it from dark web. That makes more sense. Like, not even brag about insane. Like, you have a fucking problem if you're doing 90 to 120 <laughs> milligrams of Adderall per day, not prescription. To put that in perspective, look at the average dose for Adderall. Besides him being a liar, another reason I'm skeptical of this is because he said he quit. Oh, okay, cool. So he's skeptical because I don't know nothing about Adderall. I don't know about the dosages, so I don't know what's, what's big or not. But I guess he's saying... That that dosage that he's talking about is just insane. So maybe Brendan's doing that thing where it's not enough that he's addicted to Adderall. He now has to kind of like show off and like be the Adderall like beast. So I don't do I don't I don't just take one. I take one hundred. It's like brother, come on, man. Like rein it in. Like it's not every day you have to kind of always be the biggest and baddest. Sometimes just like chill. Old turkey, which of this dose of Adderall is basically impossible. What we do have empirical evidence of, however, is Brendan's alcoholism. <laughs> do you remember that? That nigga was drinking out of bottles like fucking academics. I've never seen that until I started watching streamers. Until I started watching fucking academics and who else? And this guy, Brendan. I'd never seen people drink liquor out of a bottle. And again, I'm from the UK. We're not like, I'm, I'm from London specifically. Like, I, I don't live in Paris. We're not the most sophisticated people in the world. But I've legitimately never seen in my life somebody enjoying a bottle of liquor f- like straight to the face, apart from like Hennessy. But that's like a black hip hop culturally type thing. But I've never seen anybody else grab a bottle of fucking Jameson, a bottle of fucking Grey Goose and just like neck it, just like at home, just chilling. Why, just, why not just have a glass? And a couple of ice cubes, like, I don't know, treat yourself nice for a bit. I don't know, what the fuck is that about? Who just drinks fucking whiskey from a bottle like that? It's so weird. I don't know. That's the first time I've seen it. Maybe again, maybe I'm a baby. Maybe I'm a bit redacted in my own way, but I thought that was bizarre. Drinking the Kool-Aid. David, correct. You're drinking whiskey? Maybe. God damn, Are you triggered? <laughs> well, look, I will say this. Are you triggered? I'm doing better than that. <laughs> but you have... Alcoholism. Who's drinking don't. whiskey this morning? Because it's so annoying. Uh-huh. Who's drunk? This guy's drunk. He drinks on every single show, no matter the time of day, day of the week, whether he has to pick his kids up from jujitsu after. He's also fully addicted to nicotine and leave. So for sure, Brendan's drink driving, isn't it? Not to fucking knock on the guy, but for sure, more often than not, he's driving that fucking purple Porsche or the Lamborghini truck, whatever they have in their garage, he's driving that shit a bit tipsy. (laughs) Fucking wild guy. Leaves his nicotine pouches on the floor for the cleaning staff to pick up at night. Uh, Nicotine's good for your brain. Yes, that's why I started. Nicotine's good for your brain. That's the thing they found with like smokers, like our grandparents shit that were dying from smoking. They found out none of them had dementia or like brain issues. Because they all died. And if you thought he had any (laughs) self-awareness... I love how Brendan just like read that one article and then just bought all the nicotine pouches in the world and just stuffed them all in his mouth. (laughs) This will help me. 
this about these addictions. He's much like Burt Kreischer, complete denial at every step of the way. Dude, Theo, who's not here today, uh, he called he called me this morning. Legit concern because yesterday, you know, when I do my shows, I drink, man. I just yeah. like that. We get time. He's like, dude, I, I know we joke over, uh, joke around about intervention stuff like that. He's like, but for you to drink on most of the shows, yeah. it's concerning. Yeah. You're drinking to get through it because you hate it. Mm. I was like, oh no, no, you yeah. got, you know, don't well, you love it. I absolutely love yeah. it. Now, as I said, all of this. Jesus Christ, Theo tried to help him. It just didn't work. This was exposed by Mark, and you might think, wow, this guy's sticking it to Brendan. But don't go thinking he's some hero. Like Icarus, I Icarus? he flew too close <laughs> to the sun. Shortly after this, he had some kind of disturbing domestic stuff come out, which I won't get fully into, but it did culminate in a video of him deadlifting his wife's car as she tried to back out. <laughs> Legendary clip. <laughs> my car. He's touching my car now. He's picking up my car. Add in some allegations of infidelity and domestic violence, and you have your typical narcissist LA wannabe influencer couple. <laughs> the funniest part about this is he thought he would be seen as this hero for exposing Brendan, and as soon as the subreddit was done with him, they just threw him out. But after all this got exposed with Mark, one last thing, not through his account, got leaked, and that was <laughs> Brendan cheating on his wife constantly. This was confirmed through texts. Keep in mind, this guy also has two kids. So if you felt bad for him about any of this happening, know that the reason he tours the country kids. So if you by, by the way, um, uh, this was confirmed through texts. Keep in mind, by the way, my unpopular opinion on all of this is that I'm not a fan of everybody attacking the wife and kind of memeing her and, you know, flipping, um, posting all the shit up on the Insta on the fucking subreddit. I'm not a fan of it. I think Big Shorb already provides the fucking sub with enough content, right? Brendan's enough of a redact to just kind of, you know, laugh at him. I think you should leave the wife and the kids alone, personally, personally, personally. But I also understand the pushback from the sub because for whatever reason, the wife acts like a public figure. She's got a verified account. She's posting, you know, the pictures that she likes to post of herself on the Instagram and shit. They clearly put these pictures together to act like they're some like celebrity couple and shit. So maybe in that regard, she's kind of fair game by proxy because she's kind of involving herself into the business. Like she's not like a, you know, a, a wife that kind of like is be, you know, kind of keeps herself to herself and has a private account, and doesn't want to be seen and shit. Like maybe Brian Callen's wife. So maybe she sort of does it to herself. Then the last point to make on this, the cheating thing, my theory has always been that they have a non-verbal agreement that Brendan could do what he wants, but just don't embarrass the family or just don't embarrass me. And if he does embarrass me, that's when, you know, the ha buying the house for the mother-in-law, you know, buying her all expenses, paid trips to Las Vegas to go see the florist. That means an, another weird car coffee picture with a new car that they're leasing. That's usually what happens. But I think they have like a non-verbal, silent, we know through our eyes agreement that she's aware that when he's on the road, he's going to do what, quote unquote, what a man does. She lets him do it, but just don't bring that shit back home. That's what I think happens. Hence why whenever it gets exposed that he cheated, she doesn't flinch. You know what I mean? She even, she actually doubles down because they're cool. They've got a disagreement. So I think what people keep doing these weird op, 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 op sex, whatever it's called, is it? What's that word called? Gay ops? Yeah, that's it, gay ops. Some people do the gay ops and try to kind of construct things and kind of send their stuff to you. Oh my God, look what he did to you. I think that's never going to work because they're clearly okay with whatever arrangement they got. And also, I just think it's a bit lame trying to kind of split them up. If it happens, it happens. But I think forcefully trying to insert yourself into it is hella, hella lame, in my opinion. Again, don't attack me. I'm just a random person seeing to it. I just think it is what it is. But I still think focus on this big brown redact. Leave the others alone. He provides enough content. But hey, who am I? Who am I? Fine. This guy also has two kids. So if you felt bad for him about any of this happening, know that the reason he tours the country to sell 10 tickets a show is so he can meet some baddies. And the next big drama that happened to Brendan was... Well, 
Nothing. Not, not much, at least. Which honestly, despite what he thinks, is probably the worst thing that could have happened to him. While he was being universally gawked at, at least he was relevant, at least people knew his name, people were paying attention to him. Maybe not for the reasons he wanted, but at least he was in the spotlight. As of late, it seems the Shab train has left the station. The only- He's right, to be fair. He has got a bit boring covering the guy, I'm not gonna lie. There's nothing really left there, isn't it? He's kind of like a, it's just like, it's like a carcass that's been all picked apart. <laughs> you know, like, it's kind of done. Um, that's why I think maybe my next pivot on the random show will be to turn this entire stream into like the de facto place to just defend Brendan, defend everything he does. Just kind of be like, you know what? It's, it's, it's too, it's too easy to fucking dunk on him. Let's just be contrarian and just be like, you know what? I'm going to be the fucking, you know, Brandon Schaub, uh defense squad CEO. That might be why I might end up doing actually. And analytically breaking down the specials, saying they're good. <laughs> Advocating for him to be on Netflix, petitioning him for me to be on fucking, to have a set of the comedy mothership, maybe live streaming, writing an open letter to Joe Rogan to justify him booking him at the mothership and stuff talking about his amazing trainers like that might be something i might end up doing because it's getting so boring i'm gonna have to twist it and become the de facto home of the brendan shaw fan club that's what i'm gonna do <laughs> real drama is his co-host being exposed again for being a predator and a groomer which is probably the only form of attention that doesn't benefit shop and if these allegations are true chris delia is a fucking monster but back I, I disagree. It does benefit Shaw because Chris Alia, despite being a monster, still gets views. And despite everything, you know, that's what the thing he cares about the most and it pays the bills. So he's still good for business. So Chris is still going to be around. Back to Brandon. So you do that uh, history channel show, Hunting, Hunting Hunt Hitler. Hitler. That was fun. Did you ever find Hitler? Yeah, so he died. <laughs> In recent times, he's been reminiscing about the glory days of the comedy store and Joe Rogan and how those days are gone you know, five, six years ago, seven years ago at the comedy store is the comedy rap pack. And the we were the, pack. we were the rap pack and we were the guys and every show was sold out. Our names on the marquee, the days of, you know, being in the, in, in the hallways at the comedy store and the improv and the ice house and the laugh factory were, you know, Hey, podcast tomorrow. Yeah. Podcast tomorrow. Those days are gone. I used to pull up and Rogan would pull up in his Porsche and we'd park next to each other. We'd talk shop about the cars and what's next. And then Santino would pull up and we talked to him with Chris D'Elia and then Brian would pull up and Bobby Lee and Theo. And but unfortunately he's in denial about everything. And I seriously doubt he'll ever lean into anything that might save his career. But the worst part about this, Brendan literally has nothing to fall back on because he's never built something from nothing. He's always had a boost in whatever he's done. Fighting, he had the ultimate fighter. Podcasting and comedy, he had Joe Rogan. Being able to attract big names, he was on Showtime. He's never going to be that UFC fighter with the super successful You know what's funny about that? Podcast again. He didn't get fans from his stand-up, he got fans from Joe Rogan. You know why that's true? I never thought about that. That's a fucking great point. That's probably the reason why the whiskey failed. Think about it. The whiskey was the first thing he done from scratch by himself and no one gave a fuck because there was no community there to buy it. There was no fan base that wanted or needed it. You know, like he wasn't getting propped up. But like, I think if he would have met or was in contact with like a Joe Rogan version of someone in the whiskey industry who's like a Joe Rogan, he would have probably done really well with that whiskey because he would have latched onto that person, gone on their shows, did some reviews with them. And then when that whiskey dropped, it would have been kind of, you know, partly due the sales would have been partly due to him kind of siphoning off the fan base of that other popular person. But the one time he had to do it on his own, which he obviously didn't do it by himself, but he had to build it up by himself. It kind of showed that his fan base or his lack of kind of cultivating a community around him is always, you know, been his Achilles heel. Achilles, as he would say, heel. Um, but yeah, this video is fucking awesome. Big up the, the flipping um, account, the channel, sorry, called Ghost Gum. It's called The Never Ending Downfall of Brendan Shaw. Check it out on their YouTube channel. It's fucking amazing. I'm actually going to give it a thumbs up here. Uh, there you go. Give it a good little thummy. But yeah, check it out if you haven't already. It's a fucking really good video. Very, 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 very well done. 
and kind of speaks about a lot of the things I kind of mentioned here that make a lot of sense. Um, what people say in the chat, whiskey fell because he doesn't party. Yeah, um, good point, Crash. That's another thing I also <clears throat> didn't understand. <clears throat> Personally, for me, I feel like I drink enough. Wa I don't know. I drink enough water and green juices and like you know my little cold brew coffees that I make here on stream. I drink that enough, but I also don't think I have have enough brand synergy with that sort of shit to justify releasing my own fucking water or green juice or like i don't know instant coffee shit you know what i mean i'm not at that stage yet and i and i do that quite often i think before Bre brendan was like pretending to be a whiskey head no one really you know thought of brendan and thought of whiskey no one really even thought of him and thought of partying or like having a good time he used to kind of you know put a lot of credence in the fact that he didn't drink that was kind of his big thing he's supposed to boast about and then suddenly he turns around and he's a big drinker now and now he's got whiskey it's like hey do you know what I mean? Get, give your fans some time to get used to it already. So it was a very strange pivot that he made anyway. Um, Brendan's mouth has firm grasp on Rogan's uh, <laughs> string bean nipples. <laughs> string bean nipples. <laughs> Pick up Uche. <laughs> Someone told me actually, I got it completely wrong again. My hot texts are so bad. Someone told me in the comments actually, it's not nipple play. I just assumed it was nipple play. I guess I'm, I've been in too many Bergheim dark rooms. But it's actually just a consequence of doing HRT or whatever he's done. Some form of steroids, you get those protruding nipples. I thought it's because he likes to fucking, you know, it's Joe Rogan, isn't it? I thought he's into some fucking dark shit behind the behind closed doors, but I guess not. So I got that I got that one completely wrong. Papa Sadia said, Farfic Morgan says, I want to see Papa working at Starbucks, trying desperately to not to starve. He can't possibly afford all these expenses. He pushed himself into a corner where he has not to perform. Now, I wouldn't go that far. The only person who I would legitimately like to see, like, you know, get get completely ruined and have to get a regular job will be someone like a dark side feel because he's legitimately a crook and a bad person. Like completely. Dark side feel deserves. It. I think Brian Brennan doesn't. Um and he won't get there anyway because, you know, he's a, you know, a, a kind of a, a wealthy white dude with a wealthy white dad. Like, he's not going to ever go back down. He's got Joe Rogan and his friends. Like, he's never going to get to that sort of level. It's never going to happen. So you're kind of wishing on a star in that regard. Um, and the fact that he's still able to kind of survive now and thrive despite objectively his career being in the worst place possible now but he still drives around in nice cars lives in a great house does you know a dream job doing podcasting as a career that's evidence at least that it's not like a you know he's never gonna get to a situation where he's gonna need to be packing bags at fucking target that's not happening <laughs> it's just funny to watch in real time because i just think there's so many little mistakes that he makes are just unnecessary um, especially given the advantages he was given, man. The guy got the biggest co-sign in the world, Joe Rogan and Brian Callen, like literally giving you a career on the fucking silver platter and he still managed to fuck it up. It's just an incredible thing to witness every time.